one of the newer members, and her name is Melissa Power. Melissa, good morning. Thanks so much for being here. Good morning. Thank you for having me, Rob. We've had you on a couple of Fridays uh, since you've been in office there, you so have. appreciate you carving out some time for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, what's the status of the school system in regards to the breach and uh, the access people have to information, rest restoration of a normal school day, all that good stuff? So what I can tell you at this point is there have been letters that have been sent out to um, uh, individuals that could have potentially uh, had information, um, uh, you know, put on the dark web. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was one of those individuals that received a letter. Um, so we're we're doing things on our end, and we will be taking advantage of the free year of. Uh, identity theft mm -hmm. uh, insurance that, that goes along with that uh, letter. Um, as far as status, we're continuing to work towards, you know, full operation. That's work, what I can tell you. Work towards means you're mm -hmm. not quite there yet? Correct. Do you think the school year will start next year, status quo normal, or will we still have the effects of this, do you think? You know, I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, I wish I had a crystal ball. <laughs> um, I would love for it to be back at that operating capacity. Uh, I'm hopeful that it will be this year and not next year. The search for a new superintendent. Mm -hmm. Is what has taken place something that will reflect on the interim superintendent's record when you look at things, Ron Stevens, or is this not considered to be his responsibility and wouldn't count against him when you're doing interviews? Yeah, we actually didn't make it part of his responsibility. Um, it's been completely uh, the Board of Education members, uh, as well as uh, we hired an individual who used to be um, the school board association uh, president uh, who has been helping facilitate uh, the gathering of um, resumes from individuals who would like to compete for the position of superintendent. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a couple of assistants uh, from uh, two individuals that I know of at the board office, Elaine Bobo and uh, Dr. Schooley. Uh, they both have been imperative to to helping us get out the word and uh, that we're looking and, you know, answering any questions anybody has about our county if they were to call them. So. Bill. Yeah. Melissa, uh, thanks for joining us today. I have two or three mm -hmm. questions, but let me start off with a hardest one first okay. <laughs> uh you implied that uh the acting superintendent did not have responsibility uh i can i can accept that but somebody has to have responsibility uh for taking precautionary steps and uh so it someone has in my view uh should be viewed as been in a position to have prevented this at least to to uh, to make it less severe, uh, but we've not heard anything about that. Uh, do you have any sense at all? Are they looking for how this can be prevented in the future? You mean f as in regards to the the internet the, issue? Yeah, the internet the, issue. Okay. Exactly right. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I apologize. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were talking about the superintendent search when I. No. 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 Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. And, and I'm, now you know what it's like for me three <laughs> days a week. <laughs> I, we've shifted gears of a couple of times, and I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> but, but Let's there, pull there, that back there, just there, a little there, bit. There's a chronological order. Sure. We always start with the top, and Rob goes <laughs> for one, two, three. And then when we ask questions, we go back to the top, one, two, three. <laughs> No one, no one gave me that memo in all the times I've been on the show. Or, has it, or is there a memo of that existence? But I, Rob's pushing me. I want to push back a little bit. I speak fluent stubble field ease. Let me know what you need to know. I know how many times. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah, so what I can tell you is that we're all actively looking yeah. to try and figure out how to mitigate this issue again. Um, one of the issues that we have is that there technically is no legislation or code or standard um, that is specified specifically for each individual county school system uh, in how they are to operate when it comes to internet security. Uh, we have done the best that we could with that. Um, unfortunately, uh, individuals have just gotten so good at what they do uh, in hacking and doing things like this that at some point uh, it doesn't matter who you are there's going to be the threat of uh, being hacked and the potential hacking period that just happens so we've got to navigate what 
how we go from here um, and what other parameters we need to be put in, we need to have put into place. I know that I have had a couple of conversations with legislators, uh, and I know I'm not the only one on the board um, who has had conversations with legislators on how to figure out how to get this fixed because we need assistance if we're not given any sort of guidance and except for yeah this this you know uh security uh is is okay but you know that one might not be as as good if that's the only recommendation we get that doesn't give us a whole lot of information on what we need to do i don't i don't see how the legislators really uh, come into play here this is well, a commercial issue this is a commercial issue finding a counterbalance to a potential threat well the issue is is that you've got a lot of legislation that dictates how schools are run this is how a school is run is usually with a lot of internet and a lot of online resources if they're dictating how our how our school is supposed to run we need to have assistance period we're just at that place where we need we need assistance and the other issue is that we come up against is we only have so many dollars and if we only have so many dollars then at this point we're limited in the uh best uh, choice that we have. Um, you know, sometimes the best costs the money. And unfortunately, you know, West Virginia, when it comes to education money, um, I have a lot of grave concerns about it. Uh, in addition to, you've got the State Board of, uh, Board of Education, Department of Education, that it dictates to us that we need to utilize the WEVIS system to hold all of records. And yet there's no guidance as far as what exactly we should absolutely have in place to safeguard the information. The state has a lot uh, more sophisticated software to protect their systems, but that's not something that they provide to us. Uh, and we can't afford what they have. We just can't. And I don't believe any Board of Education um, county, county Board of Education has that ability across the state, period. We just don't have the money for that. Uh, and how do we do that? Through legislation. We need to have more money and we need, it needs to be dedicated to the security aspect of this. We need, we need assistance on this and I don't know any other way to, to do it um, when we've got issues like this. And we're not gonna be the only county if, if you know, I heard Mr. Blair yesterday say that there are gonna be other counties that are gonna grow. I think our county was specifically targeted because we are growing. We have such a growth in our county versus another county like Tucker County. Tucker County isn't growing the way that we are. It's not as well, Bill, big a county. Let me bump you your next question and go to sure. Mike because yeah, he served. Yeah. He just got back from sixty days in Charleston. Mm -hmm. Is is internet security of the schools? Anything that's on the radar right now, Mike? No, no, we we didn't discuss any of that at all. It, and as far as money goes, education gets a large, large portion of the revenues that are we collected by the state. And it's always <laughs> everybody always says we need more. DHHR says they need more. Everybody wants more. Um, it's how you sometimes it's how that money is distributed within an organization and you know sometimes it, maybe education needs to look at how they're spending their money and do it in, uh, uh, you know it's the it's the state board of education that dictates a lot of these things not not particularly legislation i'm going to push back on that and, just a little and, bit oh you can yeah. absolutely but let's go into the the safety aspects of it who exactly is it within the local board of education that oversees the internet safety in in the county it's it's a gary wine is there a gary wine in the board of education that's overseeing that stuff or is gary himself helping the board of education in any way we do have an it department uh, and um, we do have individuals there that that are uh, working through all of the issues and they look at all of the different choices we have and then they make a recommendation to the superintendent the superintendent then makes a recommendation to the Board of Education members we have a chance to ask questions this was um, internet security was something that we talked about specifically over the summer uh, I asked mm -hmm. several different questions when it came to uh, this sort of thing and unfortunately the, the software that we had was the best that we could afford and I, and when I say I'm going to push back a little bit What I mean by that is it is we have a school aid formula that is completely outdated 
we have a school aid formula that is never going to work for Berkeley uh, County. I don't disagree. Okay. It's never going to work for Berkeley County unless it gets revised. Mm -hmm. it, the school aid formula might help other counties within our state, but it does not help us in the slightest. In fact, it leaves us short. Agree. And then on top of that, if we're short, but then we're also then required to that to now have aids in the classroom, where are we going to pull that money from? You know, so that that's a legislation that was a bill that that got passed. K through three will now have aids in the classroom. Well, the money was provided for that. Not, n no, and yes and no. It's not enough yes. for Berkeley County. It's not enough. We have more kin kindergarten through third grade classes than the average uh, uh, school system, maybe minus Kanawha County, but that's it. Well, listen, let me ask you this question. Is that your opinion, or have you guys already done the math to figure this We've out? We've been doing the math, and that's been something that the that so our, this is our treasurer, yes. This is something that our treasurer and us have had several conversations uh, on, and this is something that, while I agree that we need to have kindergarten through three um, you know, classroom aides. We need more money in order to be able to facilitate that. Have you folks already made that clear to legislators elected in the state house or senate? I can tell you that we have voiced this concern to them. I don't know if we specifically sent out something to every single individual, but we have voiced this concern. Um, and you know, obviously, it's not. It, yeah, let me carry back to the sure. original question. Uh, hacking is a way of life now. Yes. Did the school board or the school system do an audit in the last two or three years of how vulnerable we are and how we could take protective action? I don't know the answer to your first question because I was not on the Board yeah. of Education and I did not specifically ask that question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I don't know. I would imagine that we have. Um, and that was one of the reasons why we could get the best system that we could with the money that we have when you say the that. best system you know are you talking about the best anti-hacking system yes. and okay yeah. okay best security system that okay. we could afford okay. mm -hmm. in the bracket that we got that was and we do we do ask the opinion of the state board of ed and they agreed that it that it was a decent system for us to use and again i believe that the reason why we were hacked is because we're one of the largest counties in mm -hmm. the state of west virginia and we're also right next to you know washington county maryland who had seen a hack um you know we're we're bordering we're very close to washington dc we've got you know there's there's certain pieces to this that i think play a part in this and and i've got some other underlying reasons as to why i think we were we were targeted we be, we we came on the radar across the country uh, with something else that had happened in our county. Um, so it, it's just is, something... Is this somewhat political, are you saying? Well, it's a political individual. It's someone who was elected to office. And then silence. And, <laughs> well, you've piqued our interest. Uh, I mean, I, I, my, my, my concern is when you have, when you have someone who is, who is elected to office and then you have individuals that suddenly appear on the WRNR comment section that never show up any other time, that get perturbed that they have not been invited onto your show to be able to ask questions of that elected official. You're saying that... I wonder if that wasn't something that peaked, that it put Berkeley County on a radar. I don't know. It's something that crosses my mind. Thank you, Alonzo. I All right. One. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, what, that was not towards Alonzo. He's not elected. No, he's not elected. But <laughs> look, well, I know that. I'm just saying he's not the one that started the whole yeah. thing. No, no paint, me is, paint me is totally confused. I have no idea what's going on. I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people who comment are also <laughs> aware, and they're probably commenting mm -hmm. <laughs> as we speak. So, go ahead, Bill. Okay. Well, did you have any warning signs at all? You know, I, we okay. Any system, any county. Any um, place that has that that is large enough, uh, you know, if you're talking about a little ma, you know, ma and pa shop, uh, it's not going to be the same. You're not going to be able to 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 get the valuable information that you want out of something like that. But if you're talking a bigger uh, organization or entity, whether government or not, um, there's always going to be evidence of 
hacking. One of the things that I work in now is I work in the IT industry, and one of the things that we we sell is a security software package. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that this whole thing has piqued my curiosity on that has had me asking questions of uh, those who, who have worked in this industry a lot longer than I have, you know, organizations uh, and, and groups and individuals and stuff, there is a daily occurrence. So if, so give you, for instance, have you ever seen those uh, emails that come across your, your phone and your email mm -hmm. and you sit there and you go, ah, that looks a little suspicious to me. That's all it is. It just, it, it's, you, you, you click on it and you could have a phishing yep. attack. You could have uh, a ransom attack. You could have any kind of attack just by clicking that link in there if you're not careful. So it doesn't matter who you are and, and, and what you do or what organization you, you have, there is always the threat. So to answer your question, have we had threats? I would. I don't know yeah. the specific yeah. answer, but yeah. I would venture guess yes. This was a ransom attack, correct? Did, did they? Did they? Th that's ask not been officially released. I, I I can't give you that information. One because I'm not privy to all of the ins and outs to this at this time. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, one of the the issues with this is that law enforcement is involved, and law enforcement, you know, they like to keep things close to the chest when they're when they're doing investigations and so only those people who absolutely need to know and some would argue that the board of education needs to know but the more people that know the greater the chance of information that they don't want out there gets out and when you say law enforcement who are we talking about specifically local or are we is there feds involved feds. well feds are involved i mean because we're it, it's a we're a school system sure yeah. uh so. another quick path sure. uh this is put an additional burden on our already overloaded teachers. Absolutely. How has the school system uh, tried to accommodate uh, the teachers, providing hot spots, providing the opportunity to do the work at home, or, or what? I think that we... Uh, that's a hard question to answer specifically. I think some individuals were able to adapt easily, and I think some teachers had had a really 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 hard time adapting to this switch um, we're talking about now the hacking system the hacking problems change yeah. the the, the yeah. change in in how they teach yeah the change in how they access information how they access their curriculum their resources to to um teach in the classroom um i know that there were frustrations on a lot of um, in a lot of areas, different aspects for different folks. You've got the lunch, the lunch cafeteria workers who needed access to student information in order to be able to prepare correctly um, food for students, you know, who might have allergies or whatnot. Um, and then you've got the issue of the front office, you know, making sure that the person who's come in to pick up their child early for a doctor's appointment is in fact who they said they are and that they are approved. Uh, to pick up the, the the student, and then you've got the classroom teacher who's trying to prepare um, lesson you know lessons for their students. So different aspects, and all of it requires internet connection, and all mm -hmm. of it requires the computer system. Um, I think that um, the powers that be, the ones who were able to make the decisions on on things um, very quickly, because you can't call a board meeting immediately. So just just you know putting that out there there are there are standards to calling a board meeting you have to have so many days notice and of course we don't have days in order to implement a change so um one of the things that i know interim superintendent stevens did as well as others within the school system was trying to provide the hot spots trying to provide that ability for people to hook up to those those pieces of information that they need whether it was the front office staff or the cafeteria workers there was a reliance, uh, and I hesitate to say, there was a almost a what felt like to some teachers a forced reliance for them to use their own personal hotspot, and I I don't I don't agree with that. Um, you've got a lot of um, teachers who were not. Um, they might not necessarily have a plan where it's unlimited data to be utilized on a hotspot in the middle of your school. And oh, by the way, some schools like Spring Mills, you, you go in that area and internet connectivity with your phone is horrible. 
Um, so it was hard on everybody. Have we learned things from it? Absolutely. Are we going to be putting things in place to, to mitigate this possibility again, should whatever happen, whether it's the internet just goes down period, irrespective of, of hacking, um, or, um, you know, if there is that potential of getting hacked again, we, we've, we're going to be putting some other measures in place for that. So, Melissa, we've interviewed everybody on the board at some point or another yeah. when they've run for election or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we had Ron Stevens in shortly after he was named uh, interim superintendent. Yep. And everybody talked about transparency. Yes. But when this happened yes. and the parents were looking for information, all yes. they got was an email with a statement. And there was nobody who was willing to stand up in front. There was nobody who would come on this show. Uh, there was nobody who would stand up in public and say, here's... What's going on? We're, we can't say a lot. Here's what I can tell you. Here's what we're going to try to do. All we got was a statement. And then, yep. and then uh, we get all the questions, mm -hmm. but I can't give any answers because I can't find anybody who pledged transparency to come up and be transparent when sure. it counts. Sure. I can absolutely tell you that we, our hands were tied. We were told to not say a word to anybody. Yeah, well, I'm aware of that. Period. Not talk about it at all. Uh, there were... So here's so yeah. okay so I'm probably going to get my hand smacked on this and I really th this is th this is how bad it it was and I Jackie if you're listening I'm sorry and I she love is you. I, uh, I, saw her comment. <laughs> <laughs> I told her to be nice so so I will take the heat for this and that's and that, and that's fine I don't want um we could lose our insurance mm -hmm. we could if we interfered my interpretation so it was not said specifically like this so my interpretation we could be brought up on charges for obstruction if we open our mouth we're in interfering at that point with a, a law enforcement investigation so, so so where do you where do you draw that where do you draw that line we absolutely know and we encouraged i know i encouraged as much as possible some some level of communication mm -hmm to be provided and uh, it absolutely stunk that more information couldn't be given. It stinks that I don't have more information than what I do now. Mm -hmm. I also, um, it, it stunk all the way around. It just stunk all the way around. And when you've got one, one individual that is, it, you know, represents um, uh, lawyers who says, don't you dare say a word. And then you have another group that says, you know, you can't say a word because we're doing an investigation. And then another group that says, oh, hey, you could lose your insurance. Yeah, there's a lot at stake by <laughs> you've making got a, a statement. Lot of, so it. you've got a way out in your in. You've got a a lot to weigh out. And and this isn't. We absolutely know that we answer to the constituents. I know I do. Um, I've anybody who has reached out to me. Uh, has gotten a, a as much of a, a transparent mm -hmm. answer as I could provide, including exactly what I just said. Those those above you who mm -hmm. are making these rules up as they as they went along, or maybe it's in the playbook. Anytime anybody, is, I is, think it's is in the playbook. In honestly, I think it's in the playbook. Period. Because I think they might have. They're, they've they're, done this before. They've done this before. We're not the only county that mm -hmm. has ever been hacked. Um, there's going to be other counties across the nation who have had it. So they've probably gotten a lot enough experience under the belt that there's reasons that they've said this, but I don't know. I don't know what those reasons are. Right. Um, well, I'm sure you know the frustration because you had to deal with it from all sides. Yep. Transparency when it's convenient is just PR. Transparency when it's difficult and needed is, it, is, the, is, the, is fulfilling the promise of transparency. Everything else when it's just good news that's just public relations. Yeah, I and and I get that. I think the the other issue is that when and this is to to defend Pat and Jackie, there's a lot of questions that that I think at the very beginning were were coming up that I don't think anybody they they just wouldn't have known the answers. Um, Which. I, a lot of the that, questions were, is, is, does my kid go to school the next day? How are you going to do the homework? Even if it was somebody saying, we're working on that, we're going to figure it out, and I can't tell you anything about anything else. If, at least if there was a, a public face, it, probably, it should have been the superintendent. 
That's the person that's in charge of everything. It should have been the superintendent who stood up there and said, I can't talk about it, can't answer a lot of things. I can assure you we're working on it. I can absolutely tell you the statement that was released had been through many different versions. I'm sure. Throughout yeah. the, all, the whole entire day. Yeah. So they had been working on it for a, a full day trying to figure out what to say, how to say it, when to say it. I mean, there's and, – and I know that it went through many versions – and which was they, frustrating for 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 him. So yeah. so to to defend him in that in that respect, I, I give him a lot of credit for just sticking with it to try and get some level of communication out. Um, there was a lot of pushback to not say a word, and you got something. Well, you might be able to do that in corporate America, but at, at the school system where you've got twenty thousand people waiting to find out and what happens. That's tomorrow. the reason why he yeah. was pushing back. Uh, uh, so. we, we need to cut time here because we're over. Uh, Melissa Power, thank you so much for coming in, and happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Thank you. Happy St. Patrick's Day to all of you.